Hey guys, it's Chris from AndroidBit.com and we're here with the LG G Flex 2 review. Now, you may remember that we called the original G Flex a bit of a vanity project. Well, with the G Flex 2, LG's vanity project just got real. Let's take a look. So the first thing you notice in the difference from the G Flex 2 from the original G Flex is that it's smaller. It's gone from a 6 inch HD display to a 5.5 inch full HD display. Now it's a plastic AMOLED, or sorry plastic OLED, so it's, uh, it's not only much better saturation and richer colours, but you've got much better contrast as well. And I haven't noticed any of the ghosting that we saw in the original G Flex. Uh, the pixel density, 403, that's, uh, that's perfectly acceptable, 403 pixels per inch. Um, the, obviously the most important part about the G Flex to is the fact that it is flexible. So the whole chassis is flexible and so is the battery. So you can press down on it on a table, uh, you can sit on it even and it won't uh, suffer any damage or flex in ways that it shouldn't. Um, obviously it's also curved. So you can see the, the curve on the side if you take a look at it. Apparently that's going to give you better audio, like a two decibel increase uh, during calls. Uh, I can't say I noticed much of a difference but it definitely does sound better on a table because the rear mounted speaker does actually sort of rebound off the table and the phone and sounds a lot louder. Um, sound quality is also quite good for the speaker. Now on the front, LG have chemically treated the glass. It's what they call Duragard. So it's, uh, I think it's 20% stronger than Gorilla Glass 3. Um, and they focus particularly on the corners. So if you do drop the phone, obviously the corner is where it's going to take most of the impact and the shock absorbency of the G Flex 2 is really incredible. Not only is the display glass stronger, but it's also more resilient in the corners and the whole flexibility of the entire device is going to make it much tougher than your regular phone. Now. One thing I will mention is the self-healing back. Um, you may have seen our scratch test. The results were not really great. Um, it didn't work really well for me or any of my colleagues that have tried it. You can see how badly we've scratched up the back. Maybe we're just a little bit over enthusiastic, but I wouldn't be investing in the G Flex 2 purely for that self-healing back because it's not going to work the way you may think. Now, on, in terms of specs, uh, the G Flex 2 is rocking a 64-bit octa-core Snapdragon 810. It's the first phone on the market to have that, and there have been lots of rumors about overheating. I can't say I've noticed any overheating at all. It does get a little bit warm, but no more than any other phone. Um, but one thing you do need to keep an eye out for is thermal throttling. That basically just means that when the CPU is under too much load, it will actually shave off a bit of the upper levels of performance, which means you won't be getting the full performance out of the phone when you're really, really hammering it. Um, like the G3 before it, it has uh, two versions. There's a two or three gig of RAM version with 16 or 32 gig of internal storage, as well as a micro SD card. Um, it's running Cat6 LTE, which is great. And the battery is non-removable. So keep that in mind if you're a big fan of replacement batteries. It's 3000 milliamp hours, which will easily get you through a day, especially on a full HD display, um, but you can't switch it out. So be aware of that. Um, Android 5.0.1 straight out of the box with LG's Optimus UI. Basically all the software from the LG G3 has been ported over, but there's a few new features. Uh, glimpse view being the main one on a lock screen. You can just swipe down to catch the time and any notifications that you have. You've also got things like dual window, the knock code, knock on of course, which we already know and love. Um, moving on, okay, so the camera, we have a 13 megapixel camera on the back, the same laser autofocus module and optical image stabilization plus. Uh, up front, it's a 2.1 megapixel camera, which I have to say, I do, I do like the results a bit more than I did on the G3. So the camera software is the big improvement. Um, the camera performance on the G Flex 2 is phenomenal. The results are really, really fantastic. You can check out a, a high-res version of all of our test photos in the description below. Um, you've also got 120 frames per second slow motion, which is cool, and you can take gesture shots. So with the front-facing camera, you just hold your hand up and close it into a fist to start a quick timer to take your selfies, including with a selfie stick, because it works up to a meter and a half away. Now, one thing I don't like about the camera is it seems a little bit sluggish. Um, switching between the front and back cameras takes an awful long time and even taking photos, the shutter speed doesn't seem to be quite as good as you would expect on a phone that's an improvement over the G3. Um, but all things considered, the G Flex 2 is a fantastic improvement over the original G Flex. LG have really listened to the areas that matter in terms of size, camera, and so on. Um, price though, this is an interesting one. We don't have an official US price yet, but you can pre-order on Sprint for a total of just over 500 US dollars. That's a really, really, really good 
price for a better G3 that flexes and is basically indestructible. In South Korea, where the phone came out first, it uh, sort of translates to about 750 US dollars, but until a final RRP is out for the US, keep an eye on your options coming up at MWC, but really the G Flex 2 is a really fantastic buy and I'm very, very impressed. Until next time guys, subscribe to the channel, check into the website, androidpit.com for all your Android news.